my mother's womb. You formed me with your hands, known and loved by you. Before I took a breath, when I doubted, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter, the canvas and the clay. Cause you make all things work together for my future.
Well, let's declare that scripture over our lives. You make all things. You make all things work together for my future. Hey there, everyone. Thank you for welcoming me to wherever you are today. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Man, come on, Scott. We've been reading Ephesians 4 a lot. I know, but we need to read it some more. Listen, uh, when we're talking about Ephesians 4, look at my Bible, y'all. Take a look at my Bible, Ephesians chapter 4. Sometimes we read uh, contextually in the Word of God, and when we do, Sometimes we read it and then we just kind of move on instead of just landing somewhere and really getting to the depth of what God has. And so we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to walk through two more gifts. We've been talking about Jesus' gifts. And, you know, speaking of gifts, I want to remind you that, man, as God is moving and, and we want to be a part of everything God is doing, listen, we are, we are all across the world in some parts, partnering with people all over the world in the midst of wars, in the midst of just unbelievable circumstances right here in our own community, uh, in some amazing things and also some very, very difficult things. And so I want to encourage you, if you're part of our online community, listen, uh, there's a thing about Konania fellowship, and that is shared responsibility. And if you're on this online community, you're a part of what God is doing in us and through us. And so I want to encourage you to, to share in that and to give and to sow and be a part of that. So today we're, we're going to continue with Jesus' gifts, and we've kind of walked through uh, three of these, and we're going to finish out today, which is going to take us into this thing we're calling Jesus Church. What is the church? What does that mean? We're going to be talking about fellowship. We're going to be talking about um, teaching. We're going to be talking about power. We're going to be talking about breaking of bread. We're going to be talking about um, prayers. We're going to be talking about so many different things as it has to do with the church. And each week, we're also going to have a digital guide for you to download that you can, a seven-day guide. So every time we speak of something about Jesus Church, you're going to have a seven-day guide that you're going to get to download, which will be in our chat. And you'll get to download that. You'll get to print that off if you're kind of a print-off kind of person. But you'll get a guide, a seven-day guide it's every single day, letting that topic that we're focusing on of being Jesus Church dig in and really root itself in your life so that you can be a healthy part of a healthy body, the body of Christ, not just the local body, the whole body of Christ. And so as we're kind of landing Jesus' gifts, we're not really landing. We're just kind of bringing it in, and then we're going to elevate again, and we're going to move into Jesus' church. Everything this year has been about Jesus, really Jesus' people. What does that mean? And uh, we landed in this place of Jesus' gifts. We've talked about all the different gifts that have been available to us in Christ but we've really landed here for a second just to really dig into what this really means. What do these five gifts really mean? So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. So these gifts have been given to us by grace. We've talked about that uh, a lot. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men, talking about Jesus. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. 
Now, this is referencing Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, what was, uh, death was defeated, uh, hell was defeated, all those things were defeated through his death and his resurrection, not just his death, but also the power of his resurrection. And then he ascended to the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for our needs, didn't leave us alone, but sent us another one, the Comforter. And what does the Comforter do? What does the Counselor do? What does the Holy Spirit do? What was he given to do? to fill us, right, that he might fill all things, one of those things being the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is us, God's creation, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God wouldn't just be with us, but in us. Come on, man, that's good stuff. Somebody say yes. Come on, put it in the chat. Listen, if you're watching this a little bit later or listen a little bit later, put it in the chat. I still want to see it. Again, I go back through these things. I'm checking to see if everybody's engaged and is it engaging and we want it to be engaging. We want it to be personal. And so it says this in verse uh, 11, and he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers, and teachers. Now we, we hit this just a little bit, but I think it's important. Why doesn't it put some teachers? I believe in all my study that Teaching is an element of all four of the other gifts. There's a teaching element in all four of the other gifts, but also it is a gift unto itself. So why do we have these gifts? Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, us, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till when? Till we all come to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is when we see him, right? The, the hope of, uh, that we have of eternal life. Until he comes, this is what we do. Now, why, why are these gifts? Okay, to equip us, but, but what else? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, there it is, may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. So really these five gifts, if you wanna just break it down into seven-year-old playground terminology so that we can grow up, <laughs> grow up. How many of you have ever heard that before? Sadly, many of us heard that as a child from an adult, right? And we tried to be adults before we were anointed to be adults and that got us in trouble. And just as a side note, we're doing that in our culture today. We're sexualizing children. We're making them a point of emphasis. We're, we're putting adult things on our kids. And shame on us as adults. We need to repent before the Lord. We need to be the adult. We need to grow up in Jesus. And we need to treat children as children. We need to lead them, guide them, protect them. We need to lead them in the way of the Lord. Back on track. Verse 16 from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, all of us, according to the effective work by which every part does its share, causes growth of the whole body for the edifying of itself in love. So when these five gifts are in activation and operation, what happens? What happens is we are equipped, we're given tools, we're equipped to do the work of Jesus on the earth, but also as we use our gifts, what happens? We all grow together. We all mature together. You help me grow, I help you grow. And so we're talking about all these different gifts. And we've talked about the, the gift of pastor. We've talked about the gift of evangelist. We've talked about the gift of teaching. And, and all these things, we've really pulled out some things that maybe we've never thought of in those gifts. Today, we want to deal with two that probably, not only have they been misapplied a lot of times and not defined well, but they've also been diminished and they've also been avoided by a great deal of the body of Christ. And I believe, number one, because of the, the uh, not the proper definition of these two gifts, but also the misapplication or the distortion of these two titles. Now, again, we've said these aren't about titles. It's about gifts. But people have made it about title, and in, in doing that, they have misapplied what this really means, what these gifts really mean. And many times in the body, people are even afraid of these two gifts. And number one, I believe they're afraid of them because it takes away the power of pastor. 
Again, we talked about it in the westernized church. Man, everything's been about pastor, and there are a lot of people who are leading churches who don't even function in a strong pastoral gift. That doesn't mean they can't lead that church. That's opposite of what, what a lot of people have been taught. You know, everyone who leads a church is really called pastor. Hey, that's pastor. That's pastor. Well, okay, I get it, but maybe they're not functioning. They're actually an overseer, a leader, or biblical terminology, which is what we're all supposed to be functioning in, bishop. Now, again, that's another word that we avoid just because of the way that it's been messed up. But guess what? People have misapplied things to the Holy Spirit, but that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is not real. And so what we've done is we've allowed the world to take away terminology that is actually biblical terminology. We've allowed the world to take away the blood. Listen, the blood, that's biblical terminology, the blood of Jesus. Not just a dude going to the cross, taking away all your sin, and now you can live however you want. No, there was blood that was shed, and it was pure blood, and it was spotless, and it was the Lamb of God from the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that blood was the atonement for our sin. The only blood that could have been spilled for the atoning of our sin was through Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. It's the blood. We can't get away from that. We don't need to change it to something else that's a little more palatable. I never understood how Christians could walk into a movie theater and go watch a horror movie and then not be able to talk about the blood of Jesus. Boom. I'm on point today, y'all. Listen, come on. Somebody put in there. Whether you like it or not, whether you felt that or not, just put, he's preaching now. Come on, just put it in there. Encourage me today in the Lord. We want to be a part of all the world, and we even want to be a part of the degradation of the world, but somehow when we start talking about the Bible, we want to dumb it down. We want to make it more palatable. Listen, it's not supposed to be more palatable. Man, it's supposed to hit us. It's supposed to be like a two-edged sword, just piercing through us and separating our flesh and the spirit and getting to who God created us to be. When we talk about all these things, the gifts, and we talk about all these different things, we can't dumb these things down. We can't remove biblical definitions of certain things, and especially the gifts of God. And these two gifts, I'm not going to say they're some of the most powerful gifts because all the gifts need to be functioning. But I'm just telling you, without these two gifts, man, there is an anemic church There is an anemic body, a powerless body, without these two specific gifts. So the first one we're going to talk about is the gift of apostle. This is one that's probably been the most abused. This word has been the most abused. When we think about, when I think about the gift of apostle, and when I study the gift of apostle, here's what I see. And as we're talking about this, remember, when we're talking about the gifts, there may be elements of these these gifts that you go, oh, wow, I've, I've got some of that. That doesn't necessarily make you that. If you have elements of, of the gift of an apostle, it doesn't make you an apostle, okay? So when we talk about the gift of apostle, seize the big picture. This is big vision. This is big picture. This is huge, big picture. It's also parental in tone and function. And what I mean by that is like, there's a very parental tone with this gift. If you have somebody in your life that functions in this gift, you may call them, hey, they're they're like a spiritual father or mother to me. And that's literally because they're functioning in this gift. There's a tonality to this gift that is very parental, that speaks things into your life and draws things out of your life that sometimes you don't even know are there. That's very parental. In our relationship with our children as we're raising them up, there are times that we correct them in things, we speak things into them, and they don't understand it. They don't get it until they become an adult. And when they become an adult, they realize there were things we spoke into their lives and called out of their lives that they didn't even understand at the moment, but they can literally see the fruit of it now. We've all experienced this. We become adults, and all of a sudden, now we're telling stories about what we used to do. Then our parents are actually telling stories. We didn't even know those things were going on when we were kids. Hopefully, we didn't know they were going on. You know, we, we, Tanya and I, we can talk about things that we were walking through as a family, and the girls would be like, well, I don't remember that. I just thought macaroni and cheese and ramen noodles was 
was, uh, I thought that was what everybody was eating. Well, we were eating it because we were on a tight, tight budget. You know, we were making only this per week. And we made some sacrifices. We made sacrifices in our home so that Tanya could be in the house with the girls until they went to school. We made sacrifices. When I say sacrifices, I'm talking about multiple jobs. I'm talking about no insurance, making sure the girls had insurance when Tanya and I didn't even have insurance. I'm talking about what we weren't going under with, with credit and getting new vehicles and trying to keep up with the Joneses and all that. Man, we were, we were laying it out. We were giving our lives to Jesus the best we could. We were sacrificing so that because we felt like that the Lord wanted Tanya at the house with the girls, helping to raise them in those formative years, praying over them, prophesying over them, making sure she was with them every day so that when we did send them off to school, they had a firm foundation in their life. And when we talk about the things we did, the girls would be like, well, I don't remember that. Of course they don't, because it wasn't for them to carry. That was for us. And so when we talk about the gift of apostle, it's very spiritual parenting, right? Parental in tone. It's all about equipping others. That's primary function, equipping others. It's supernatural wisdom, supernatural wisdom. There is a desire in this gift to build and to start things that have never existed, not to build on something else, not to add to this, but something that's never existed, an idea that's never come up, a, a possibility that hasn't even been a possibility before. This gift leans into that, a desire to build and to start, to awaken others and awaken the whole body. That's a desire in this gift to awaken people to their supernatural potential and their giftings in Christ. Again, that's very parental in nature. Identity is huge for this gift. People knowing who they are in Jesus, who they really are, is huge for this gift. This gift has a pioneering spirit, like going where no one has gone before. Come on, right? Forging new paths, agents of change and transformation. This gift looks forward constantly. Now, all these seem to be amazing things, but as we've talked about before, for every amazing thing our gifts, uh, every amazing opportunity that our gift affords us, there's also a negative to that. Well, what's the negative? Well, if you're always looking in front of you the whole time, sometimes you're looking so far ahead that you diminish what's going on right now. That's the one Achilles for a visionary is that you're looking so far ahead that you miss what's right in front of you right now. You're so looking forward to what can be that you forget what is right now. And that can be in your family life. That can be in all areas. This gift is centered on spiritual leadership. It's similar to our thumb, right? So when you think of the fivefold, right? The fivefold giftings, five, right? So you've got, you know, you've got pastor. You've got prophet, and you've got teacher, and, and you've got evangelist, and you've got these gifts, right? But then you've got the gift of the apostolic because it can touch all the others. It affects all the others. That's kind of the way that I see the gift of the apostolic is like a thumb, that it touches all the others. It has influence with all the others, each and every one of them. Because it does, that, that spiritual parenting. It's a gift unto itself, but it can still touch all the others. Paul had a dominant apostolic gift, yet he functioned in teaching, evangelism, and the prophetic. And by the way, his letters from prison are very pastoral, even though he has a dominant apostolic gift. If you want scripture on the gift of apostle, read Paul's letters to the churches in the New Testament. Read those. Well, Scott, give me all the references. No, there's too many. You read his letters to the churches and it will show you really what this gift is all about. Here's some traits of this gift. Think about these. Sees giftings in others before they do themselves. Like it draws out of them. This gift sees solutions. Here's one thing you'll hear from this gift a lot. Listen, don't you dare bring me a problem without a solution. Because that apostolic gift is always looking at solutions. Listen, we don't have to look for problems. They're everywhere. But who's going to look for a solution? We live in America. Uh, I live in America, right? And in America right now, all you see are problems. 
because that's all that's being presented because we have a lack of leadership in our country right now. And that's not a political statement. That's a reality statement. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle or, or, or what uh, affiliation. We have a lack of leadership in America right now. And because of that, all we see are problems every single day and no solutions. We need some apostolic gifts to be able to function once again. When you talk about traits of this gift, they have strong opinions. <laughs> this gift has strong opinions. Hates complacency. Hates complacency. We're not going to stand still. We're moving forward. And the truth is spoken no matter the cost. No matter the cost. When you talk about this gift, when it's not present in the whole body, here's some things that can happen. People struggle with their identity and the use of their giftings. The body is hindered in its growth and progress. Ungodly behavior becomes the norm. Why? Because there is no spiritual parenting. There is no leadership, true spiritual leadership. There's no authority. This gift leans toward every person knowing who they really are in Jesus. Every person discovering their God-given anointing. Vision, building, teaching. And there's tangible fruit of God's power in this gift through miracles, signs, and wonders. That's a biblical definition of the gift of apostle. That signs and wonders would follow. That there is tangible fruit of God's power. So listen, if you kind of feel like this has touched a little bit of a spiritual nerve, write it down, write it down. Man, I feel like maybe the Lord has, has, has put some of these traits inside of me. Lord, show me what this is. Come on, write it down right now. If you got to put it in the chat, if you don't have something to write, write down. Hey, I, I feel like maybe I've got some traits of this right now. Come on, put it in the chat right now. Moderator is going to pray for you right now. Right now, are, are going to pray for you. So there's the gift of apostle. Now, the gift of prophet. And this is a lane where myself, as well as the gift of teaching, this is kind of where I, I land. And this gift is not to be flaunted or made a spectacle of. Somebody say amen to that right there. Because this gift has been one of the most abused as far as flaunting and making a spectacle of. All of a sudden now it becomes some daytime soap opera show about, oh, I sense this, and I feel this, and I feel this. Let me ask you nine questions about yourself. And in those nine questions, they're going to get information about you, and then they're going to deceive you to make you believe you have a gift. Because for every prophetic gift, there's also an evil demonic strategy to try to use elements of this gifting, and it doesn't draw you to Jesus, it draws you to darkness. And that's true. You want to know where we fall with psychics and mediums and all these things? I believe people have been gifted, but that gift was not made for evil. It was a gift that God put in them, and now they have decided to use it for darkness rather than light. It's false. It's fake. It's not true reality of the kingdom of God. It's to draw you away from Jesus, not point you to Jesus. This gift is a heart revealer, revealing the heart of the Father and also the heart of man. That's why sometimes people have an issue with a prophetic gift because it reveals your heart. Man, when a true prophetic gift walks in the room and starts calling out stuff you've been doing in your life and it's real and it's true, that's rough. Think of Nathan the prophet coming in the room with David. Like Nathan the prophet saying these things about this vision and all this other stuff, and David thinks he's talking about somebody else. But when it comes down to it, who am I talking about? It's like, ah, you're talking about me. And David has to repent before the Lord. His heart is revealed. Listen, in my area of gifting, it sounds like this. How's your heart? I'm asking you. I'm not asking somebody else in the chat. I'm asking you, how's your heart today? Listen, if your heart is not well today, you need to pray right now. Man, Lord. My heart isn't right. Man, Lord, my heart is hurting. Man, Lord, my heart is empty. Man, Lord, my heart is hard. Whatever that is, wherever you're at in your heart condition, pray right now, Lord, soften my heart. Lord, fill my heart with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill my heart, Lord. Fill my heart, Lord, with love today. How's your heart? And the way that my gift lands, the next question is, what is the Lord saying to you? Like, what is the Lord saying? How's your heart? What is the Lord saying? Because if your heart isn't right, whatever the Lord's saying to you, it's going to be hard for you to walk that out. Why? 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 Because if your heart isn't right, whatever the Lord is saying to you, it's going to be hard to walk out if your heart is not pure, if your heart is not in a good place. It's going to be almost impossible for you to walk out what God is saying. One thing I've learned about this gift in 28 years 
that is not really taught in our circles is it's better to lead with your ears than with your mouth. Because when you talk about the gift of prophet, immediately we begin to think about what's being said. But let me tell you what happens. What's being said is gonna carry more weight if your ears were open before your mouth opens. Because you're gonna hear what the Lord is saying. You're gonna let what the Lord is saying deal with your heart first. And then you're gonna open your mouth to speak. Here's what God is saying. It's like, what are you saying, Lord? Okay, let that in my life, let it work in my life. Now, hey, here's what the Lord is saying. Just like when we speak every week, like I better be listening this week before I even come to you and bring you what the Lord is saying. I better be hearing for myself what the Lord is saying. I think of Samuel, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. There are three common traits in all the gifts of God. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, we've talked about this, love, grace, but also the prophetic. Don't discount that. In every single one of those areas, the prophetic is there. Because all the gifts of God are rooted and grounded in love, right? Yes. Have been given to us by the grace of God. Yes. But every single one of those gifts include prophecy to prophesy or the gift of prophet in all of them. I think that's very interesting. And God never does anything by accident. God's plan has always included a prophetic people. Never discount that. God's plan has always included a prophetic people. God's desire is that the body would be a prophetic people who hear his voice and proclaim his word. Listen, to prophesy doesn't mean you're a prophet. How will I know if I am? The fruit of your walk will determine that, not you. You don't determine you're a prophet. The fruit of your life determines that. 1 Corinthians 14, 31, Paul stated, all may prophesy one at a time. He even talked about, listen, I'd rather you prophesy in understanding than tongues in just personal edification. Prophecy is not interpretation of tongues. Paul covered this with the Corinthian believers. Prophecy is not necessarily prediction. Oh man, I can't wait for a prophecy. It's gonna tell me what's gonna happen in 10 years. Foretelling at times, yes, but the New Testament is filled with foretelling. Instructions, warning, rather than prediction. Catch that now. Prophesying is not the same as preaching. What? Wait a second. To preach means announcing the good news. Prophesying means the gift of communicating an established revealed truth. This gift accurately discerns God's heart for a situation, and this gift helps us hear God's voice, helps us mature in hearing his voice. This gift brings clarity where there is a lack of discernment. And it's all about transformation. Listen, this gift is all about transformation. Hearts, minds, attitudes, it's all about transformation. Turning all of it to the Lord. Turning my heart, my mind, my actions, everything back to the Lord. His purposes, His plan. What is the Lord saying? Then doing that. And I'll tell you one thing about this gift. This gift changes the atmosphere. It shifts the atmosphere. Here's what I mean by that. Recently, I was in Virginia and went and... You know, whenever I go somewhere and uh, we had two services on a Sunday morning, I preached both of them similar but not because the, the, just the, the atmosphere was a bit different between the first one and the second one. And then being with the team and going to leadership stuff and then Wednesday night coming together for this thing called the well. And it was just, hey, whatever the Lord wants to do. And so it wasn't necessarily a, hey, line by line message. It was like, I don't even know what the Lord's gonna do. Man, I got up and I started prophesying and I started prophesying in the room and all of a sudden something shifted and I was prophesying to some of the, to, to some of the worship team and all of a sudden, man, it was just like boom. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, let's create a, let's create a walkway, man, where people will walk through and get prayer. Quote, unquote, a fire tunnel, so to speak. I don't necessarily call it that, but it turned into that and all of a sudden the atmosphere just shifts. And whoever wanted to walk through comes walking through and leadership was on one side and the other and they were just praying over them. And man, some things were just dropping and happening, man. And it was crazy. And then by the time, this was like hours this took place. And people were being healed, set free, delivered. All this is going on. And then at the very end, I felt led that Tanya and I needed to wash the feet of the pastors. So we're washing the feet of the pastors. And one of the staff members gets up and they're like, listen, we need to honor the gift, not the person, but the gift of prophecy because this has been an atmosphere change tonight. That's, that's when you know. 
And here's what happens when the atmosphere changes. You may not even know how to quantify what happened. You just know something happened in the spirit. Listen, we are so keyed in on, we have got to define what happened. Why? Why do we have to define what happened? If it's the Lord, then it's up to him to quantify it. It's up to him to move us to the next step. It's not up to us to quantify what happened. Oh, 1,014 people prayed a prayer. That doesn't mean that heaven was shifted. What is going to be the fruit of their life now? Man, so many times we're like, man, we had 147 people saved. How do you know? Because you haven't even seen the fruit of their life yet. How do you know? They may have prayed a prayer. Man, that's awesome. That's great. But what's the fruit of their life? That's not dictated by us. Listen, that's all about heaven. That's all about the Lord. That's all about the fruit that comes out of our lives. A moment of encounter, yes, important. But what now is the experience with Jesus every day? What fruit is coming out of that? And for me, the gift of the prophetic, I used to try to quantify it. I would get disappointed. I would get discouraged when I would share. I'd be like, man, nothing that I thought happened, happened, Lord. I'm such a failure. And the Lord's like, who are you to judge what I did? You didn't do anything, Scott, except use the gift I've given you. Everything else is up to me. And man, when I realized that it wasn't about numbers or this or this or this, it was more about did God shift the atmosphere? And if I can't explain it, fine. But I know God moved. This gift can be partnered with vivid dreams and visions. Me, I'm more visions, open visions rather than dreams. Those who are healthy in this gift, listen, refuse to do it for others. Yet the unhealthy side of this gift actually does it for others. The unhealthy side of this gift that says, hey, I'm a prophet. Hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. You need to do that. Hey, I'm sensing the Lord saying this. You need to do that. Listen, my gift is not to make anybody decide anything. My gift is used to awaken them to what the Lord is telling them to do and be as a guide to decision-making, not the decision itself. No dates, no mates. That's a great instructional manual on the prophetic. No dates, no mates. Stay away from it. Even if you think you know, stay away from it. That's up to the person. That's up for their journey. That's up for the Lord speaking to them, right? There is an unhealthy side in the prophetic gift, which points everything to the person functioning in the gift rather than to Jesus. Listen, this gift brings people to a place of decision where we must choose. And let me tell you, that's uncomfortable. The unhealthy side of this gift, listen to me, resists correction and can be prideful and arrogant. That's the unhealthy side. The unhealthy side of the prophetic is, I don't want an apostle in my life. I don't want the voice of a pastor in my life. I don't want the voice of an evangelist. And I sure don't want the voice of a teacher. They're only intellectual. That's pride and arrogance. And that's a stench in the nostrils of God. Boom. I said it. Come on, put some kind of emoji in there. Come on, put it in there. Either fire, whatever that is. But I'm just telling you, This is one of those gifts where the enemy tries to come so hard to make you think you're functioning in this massive ministry and you're somebody and it has destroyed more lives than we can possibly imagine. People that had great motives, fallen, not just away from the Lord, I'm talking out of it, boom, gone. This gift senses and feels God's heart for people when they pray with them. And here's what happens if this gift is missing in the body. There can be a struggle to hear God's heart. Less emphasis on intimacy with God, deep personal relationship with Jesus. When you talk about the gift of prophet, man, it leans you into deep personal relationship with Jesus. That can be uncomfortable. This gift is essential for the body to grow in hearing from the Lord. Essential for for knowing the heart of the Father and awakening and guidance and healings. Some scriptures to read pertaining to this gift, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
13 and 14. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. That is a balanced New Testament look at prophesying. And so here's where we want to land today. Scott, how do we, how do we like discern? How do we like move through this, especially like the gift of prophet? How do we, how do we land with like testing that? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. This is a beautiful manual on how we deal with all the gifts. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4. This is a beautiful manual. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves, honoring one another, comforting one another, blessing one another, helping one another grow and mature in the Lord. Ephesians 4. Verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. This is correction, right? The gift is being used. Comfort the faint-hearted. That's very pastoral. Uphold the weak. Come on. Be patient with all. All that has to do with giftings that the Lord's given us. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. That's back to Ephesians 4. It's not just about you. It's about you being equipped to do the work of the ministry, right? But it's also about you using your gift now to help everybody else. Verse 16, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Man, how do I know what's what? Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good and just let go of what is not. Don't hang on to it. Don't have 19 million conversations about it. Don't open every meeting talking about it. Man, every meeting that we have here at the church, the the team knows it, the elders know it. One of the first things I'm gonna say, tell me something good. Not because we're trying to be this super positive atmosphere and not talk about bad things, but listen, Everybody can bring problems. We're bringing solutions. We're talking about what's good, what God is doing. We're holding fast to what is good. We're testing all things. And then it says, verse 22, abstain from every form of evil. Stay away from it. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's super amazing guidance in the function and operation, not just of the gift of the prophet, but all the gifts that God has given us. Listen, if you feel like the Lord has put elements of that gift, that prophetic gift in you, write that down right now. Put it in the chat right now. Man, I I feel like the Lord's put that gift in me, but man, it's been a little spooky and the way that people talk about it's a little bit weird. And man, I've just seen some real just some super big mess ups as it has to do with this. And I just never have had a healthy view of this gift of apostle. Put that in the chat, write it down and pray that the Lord would use this and use you in that gift. So as we land this today, and and I don't know if you realize this or not, but the fact that I have dealt with apostle and prophet in 31 minutes, it's pretty impressive, y'all. I'm not saying that about myself. I'm just saying it's pretty impressive. The anointing of the Holy Spirit can land those two gifts in about 31 minutes. Crazy. Because you could spend hours on each. But listen, we're not here to do that. We're here to say, boom, here's the gift. Boom, here's the gift. Now, do we have elements of it? Yes, I have elements of it. How do I use? God, how can you use me in these gifts to point people to you? And also, oh, That's what the gift of apostle is. Oh, that's what the gift of prophet. Man, I need that in my life because I need all five. So Lord, I pray right now for everybody who's connected to this, Lord, that we would rediscover, not our gifts, but we would rediscover our first love. That's you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you. We are in love with you, being madly in love with you. And out of that, that we would use the gifts that you have given us to equip one another, to help one another, and to help the whole entire body grow. We are sick and tired of not doing our share and knowing that somebody is not getting what they need because we're not using our gift. Lord, we repent before you right now. We're sorry, Lord. 
And Lord, we want to reactivate those gifts. Can you reactivate those gifts within us? Let us see them once again and be an awakened to them so that we can use those gifts, number one, to glorify you, to point everything to you, Jesus. Number two, to equip others in the body to do the work you've called them to do. And Lord, number three, so that we all grow and mature to become more like you, Jesus. So Lord, we lay our sinful nature, we lay our sins of omission, things we did not do that you called us to do. We lay it at your feet. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. We repent. We turn from our wicked ways. Lord, being in love with you, Jesus, following you now with everything we've got, learning and discovering what's inside of us and what you've put inside of us. But more importantly, who you've put inside of us. The Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised you from the dead. And so, Lord, we thank you. Thank you today that you loved us so much that not only did you die for us, not only did you atone for our sin and create a pathway for eternal life for us, but you loved us enough to give us gifts so that now we can make your name known on the entire earth while simultaneously helping to build the body of Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being the head. It's not a person, it's you. It's you, Jesus, you're the head. And everything that we do as the body points to the head. And Lord, may it be so in our lives every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless you guys. Hey, let us know, mediahub at thbshreport.com. What is the Lord speaking to you? What gifts? All those different things. Let us know. We want to hear it. God bless you guys.